I get the whole aspect that we want to have the human guy on the team who's grounding us and like doing what we need to do and like keeping us safe. But like the way she was just talking about it was kind of like, you know, Steve is this so dry out of time. He's done this and that. He's this great war hero. Da 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 da. Sam, you're just some guy. You're a social. Worker. <laughs> it's like that's not now. See. That's how, that's that's exactly, that's exactly what she gave. That's exactly what she gave, and I expect it from Carol because she. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another real life video. I am Kurt Wagner, aka Nightcrawler, soon to be the Uncanny Spider Man. Oh, and I am Miles Morales, the real Spider Man. <laughs> that was nasty. Anyway, <laughs> how are you? I'm fantastic. You know, um, it's finally like getting a little bit better weather out here and getting a little bit sunnier. Okay. Uh, however, however, I know I've said this before on the show, but I have to say this. I like don't want to work anymore. So if anybody wants to <laughs> sponsor me somehow, <laughs> let's do that. Because they've started us going back into the office. And oh, you have that life is, life is not for me. The pandemic started, right? Yes, which means that I should keep doing it, right? If I showed you that I could already do it, I should keep if doing the, it. If the productivity is there. Hello. Like, what you want me to do? Do you guys do like parties and stuff when you come to the office? They gave us these like meal vouchers for um, <laughs> <laughs> food trucks that come. And you can get some free food. But it even leave it's, it's not even a lot. Like they had a taco one the other day. They gave you two tacos. Sometimes the food trucks be hitting. Sometimes. <laughs> not all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Well, I like free people. I gotta, I gotta play the lottery or something. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Well, hopefully the good food trucks are out like consistently for you when you have to go. Hopefully. <laughs> and they need to bring some like, like... Where you can like track certain food trucks and it'll tell you where they're going oh. to be. Oh. Oh my gosh. They used to save my There's life. There's an app for everything. I did not for even everything. think of that. Technology is amazing. That's why it's kind of crazy how much we don't do with it. <laughs> Ain't that wild? <laughs> we could really revolutionize the world, but here we are. Anyway, how are you? Um, I'm doing wonderful. We've been having really great weather here in the city. Um, they were it was just surprising. They've been saying it's supposed to like rain and be cloudy all the time, but it hasn't been. You know, global warming. She scares me, but sometimes she does what she needs to do. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate that. I had a really great like adult moment. You know, on the flip side of adulthood is working and paying bills and all the stuff you don't want to do on the other side of it though it's waking up at like 9 a.m and saying i can have this ice cream for breakfast and no one can yeah. <laughs> and it was fantastic hagen dolls irish cream brownie it's got these little chocolate chunks in it love it it really got my day started wait is that coffee ice cream yeah a little bit oh i like coffee <laughs> I like coffee. Well, I don't know if it's, it's Irish. It's Irish cream. Cream. Got I, it's, it. Is that like? I don't drink a lot of coffee, so I can't really get into the specifics of what goes on with it. But I'm more of a tea girl. Yeah. Okay. Ice cream for breakfast though sounds great. I'm not. It's amazing. Let me tell you, it was like, and I was hot. I forgot to turn my air on, so I was like, <laughs> oh man, it's hot. And I was like, this cold ice cream, and it was so good, and I felt up, and it was fantastic. Go get to treat yourself. That is again the perks of adulthood that they don't tell you when you're a kid because they're always like, "Don't do this, don't do that." Da, 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 da. Ah. <laughs> I pay the bills. I'm gonna do whatever I want. <laughs> okay, this is my house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get into the updates of the week. Um, some fun stuff. Some not so fun stuff. Starting with uh, <laughs> there is a one so shot fun. coming out coming called. Fallen Friend, The Death of Ms. Marvel in July 12th, and that will be the, I guess, like it says, The Death of Ms. Marvel. Kamala Khan will be dying, and we'll be seeing the, uh, I guess, the 
outcome of all of that and how the other heroes are reacting to it. Spider-Man particularly, I guess they made a big thing in her life because... Isn't she appearing in his books right now? Yes. She has been in, I think, three issues mm. of his run right now. Because I know at, she was um, a big part of the... Um the dark web stuff, which I just found really shocking. Cause I was like, why is all of a sudden she like popping up in Venom and she's getting this tie into the Spider-Man event? When did she become a Spider character? She never was, but I believe that they wanted this to come out eventually. So they just, mm-hmm. you know, tried yeah. to force some groundwork for her. Um, it'll be interesting to see what, how, what happens with her afterwards. It's wild to see a character who is so popular um, mm-hmm. be killed off this way. Also, for me, it's wild to witness the the way that Marvel has completely deleted the Inhumans from yeah. their franchise. Like, but they I deserve- recognize they aren't popular. See, <laughs> I recognize that they aren't popular, <laughs> but I don't think I've ever witnessed like them getting rid of a franchise like this, like completely wiped out. I've seen them shelve some characters. I've seen them, you know, do some stuff or write them off, but never like this. You never win when you play dirty. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I, that was giving uh, a like confessional. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's some I'm reality saying. show. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, but yeah, we'll be looking to see what happens with Kamala Khan July 12th. Uh, it was also recently announced that Loki season two will start streaming on October 6th. And all of the episodes of Echo will drop on November 29th. That's also the not so good news. I don't know. You know, I've seen a lot of people reacting to that Echo news. And it's been interesting because they've been saying they feel like Disney is doing that for this because they don't really have faith in it. Do you agree? Well, yeah. Yes. Yes, I do. I think that they put all the episodes out because I don't think that they thought people were going to. Like, tune in week to week stay with it but do you think now. it's because specifically because they don't have faith in echo or do you think it's because of the reaction that people have been having to the disney plus shows in general i think it's specifically echo then why even make the show i don't know i think because she was popular i guess enough at the in the other shows and um i'm sure they were using this as a also it's the time mm-hmm it's the holiday season. You're not going to expect people to kind of tune in week to week during the holidays. Everyone's on their vacations. Sure, they are on vacation at home. They could keep up with stuff. But the last thing they do is keep up with a show. Most of the time, people are doing other things while they're on their vacations. So I don't know. I feel like the holiday the- season could also just be Echo. I feel like one of the things that's always kind of saved Marvel is that people always go to the Marvel engine no matter what. Like, they go see it, they know it's there, it gets watched, it gets its views, it does what it needs to do. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the situation. I just wanted your input. That's what I've been seeing a lot of people say. And it just piqued my interest. They may have had some information or looked at the characters and may have noticed that new characters may do better when they have all of the episodes instead of, you know, being drawn out week to week. I mean, I'm a watcher, so it don't matter. <laughs> yes. But um, it's interesting to see what they're going to be doing with her. I know they said something about her having powers, and she goes back to yeah, that, from, like I, Minnesota I, or something. I think it's going to focus, I hope, I hope it doesn't focus like on what that Phoenix miniseries she had was, where she was fighting with the adversary, and they were like going back through time to deal with her family lineage and all that stuff. It wasn't very good. That's kind of what it sounds like they were doing. She was going back to whatever her hometown is. I forget where they made it in the MCU. She goes back there and is dealing with these new powers that she has. Okay. Peter I Phoenix. I get dropping them all at once and not having the faith in that because that is not who it's supposed to be. But whatever. Isn't she supposed to show up in Daredevil? I'll wait for that. She is supposed to be a show up in Daredevil. So hopefully she does some more stuff over there. Daredevil should be good. That's like 16 episodes. Are they going to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Week to week? Uh, oh, of course they are. That's a long time to, yeah. to be watching the show. And we're going to be there every week. 
Wow, shout out to Jenna Wu. Okay, um, next up we did find out that uh, uh, Chawatale Ajia4, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, apologies if I got that wrong. He has been cast in Venom 3. Now, we know him to be Baron Mordo in Doctor Strange, but now he's been cast in Venom 3, and they say he's going to be kind of like a, a opposite character to Venom. So do you think that they are starting to maybe show that he... You know, Barry Mordo is going to be in Venom. Are we getting more MCU connection here, or do you think he's going to be a completely different character? Oh, I don't know. Someone's going to have to tell me. I will not watch it. A mess. Anyway, I know I've never, I've, seen, never... I've never seen Venom's one and two. That is wild. I don't. Neither have I. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't either. <laughs> I have not seen one like... and two. I don't know. People like greatly underestimate my ability to ignore something I do not care about. Like right. when we were talking about Ben Riley that day, I don't know who that is. You still don't know. I still don't know to this day. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like Venom. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. It just does not appeal to me in the slightest bit. I don't want to consume any of his media. This stuff happens. It's successful. Good for him. You stay very popular. I'm gonna stay where I'm at. We're cool. And it's crazy because Venom has a lot of people who I really like in it. I like Tom Hardy. I like Riza I like Chiwetel. I like who else is in this movie? I think Michelle Williams was in one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I like those people, but I just yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I don't know it. either. Venom just doesn't have the juice for me. I just cannot connect with it. But it'll be interesting to see if they're going to have this kind of MCU connection if he does end up playing Born Baron Mordo in this movie. Um, but I thought they did that already. I feel like I heard something about an uh, after credit scene where didn't he get transported to the universe with Tom Holland and Spider-Man? That was Vulture. Oh. Not, not uh, Mordo. Well, no, that's what I was so like, I was like, that was already like his MCU connection in. Oh, yeah. I guess technically that is something. And I think that was in Morbius. They, they showed the connection, which another movie I did not see. No, I watched. Oh, it might have. Actually, that does sound right because I watched Morbius. And maybe that's where I'm thinking of the scene from. You watched Morbius, but you didn't watch Venom. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? Morbius is a vampire. Ah, uh, there it is. Got it. And it has Jared Leto. I like Jared Leto. I don't know. He's interesting. Weirdo. But <laughs> he's the hell nice. He is. I don't know. <laughs> he is. But I just think he's interesting. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you know what, y'all? On that note, let's go ahead and take a break and then we'll come right back. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so the terrible, but you know what? That is fine. We will we'll, we'll shelf it for another day. All right, everybody, welcome back to another pool week. And we had, like, a huge pool week this week, honestly. There were tons of comics. I don't feel like I've had this many in so long. It took me the entire week to actually read them. Um, a couple of quick pulls before we get into the main books of the week. Obviously, there was the vigil number one that came out that was from Ram B and Sharma. It's a new uh, team, a part of, like, the DC Initiative with some of their new books. It's an all-Indian superhero team, so, like, check that out. It was really dope. Titans number one came out. This is Tom Taylor and Nicola Scott taking over the Justice League is on hiatus, so the Titans are, like, stepping up as the premier super team, and it's got that classic feel. It's got the team back from the Wolfman Perez era, if you know what the, except for Jericho, which I think is kind of a slight. I think Joey should be back with this group, but whatever. Um, I come back. 
check that out if you're into the Titans. Uh, She-Hulk 13 was out this week. That continues her romance comic. She's got this new villain kind of guy who's also trying to woo her. So he's coming in as like a potential suitor to maybe mess up some stuff she's got going with Jack of Hearts because he's been distracted since his powers have come back and he's doing a lot of stuff. Um, Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty number 12 was out, continuing the Cold War event. This was part three. Really great art. The team was in Antarctica, so they all had on like these kind of stuff. So it's, I take that black. They're, they all had on like something white. And <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam and Sharon just both happened to already have a lot of white in their costume, so it worked. Steve is very much in his blue, and Missy still very much got on that black and red thing she wears, which. Now when I think about it, I wish they all would have had on like some type of stealth tactical suits. That would have been like a really nice little art thing. But whatever, nonetheless. Sam had these white wings. They were hot. Uh, <laughs> Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, number three, was out this week. Really great story. I'm not going to lie to you. The story, the plot is kind of like... Oh, what happened? Is, what happened? It's doing a little bit of like moving around. <laughs> 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 but... They are like, this story is pretty much about Brielle and like they're building this world out for her. They're like building her friend group out, the school she goes to. She's building this relationship with Blade. He like gives her a jacket, this issue that was super cute. Um, They have introduced Whitney, who is like the foster child of Deacon Frost. And she has become, it's like a base, a base, a Buffy Faith type of situation they got going on. So like, that's really cute. And like, that's what this series gives me. So I like it. Like I said, the plot is a little, okay. <laughs> we we just move in until we get to the fifth side. Um, and Guardians of the Galaxy number two also came out that continues the story of like their thing going with Groot and he's like destroying people. They're trying to save folks. There's something that happens with Peter that makes it seem like it looks like the next few issues we're going to be dealing with the Spartex people and like all the Star Lord stuff and Master of the Sun and astrology. I I, I kind of just piled a lot of that on there. We definitely are dealing with like some Spartex people because they sent him a message. So I'm really excited for that. So check back for that. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the main bulls of the week. We'll start out, you know, we've been doing LZ and his rereads. Uh, Authority number three from Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. And tell us how you're feeling about the boys. Yes. So, all right. This issue opens up again. Uh, there was all that destruction last issue that happened in London. And of course, the heroes of the authority are help offering some assistance to help out the people there. We have Swift and the magician down there and on the trenches helping people like they're digging people out of dirt and like moving stuff around, really showing that they're heroes. Then you have everyone back on the carrier and Apollo is like, um, are we going to do something about the island that we just left in that big force field? And Jenny Sparks is like, well, somebody shut this man up. Like, I got the players, like, get him out of my face. And uh, I thought that was a really a cute moment while she's giving everyone kind of a sit rep around the carrier and telling everyone what they could need to be doing. Uh, the United Nations and the villain are having a back and forth. He basically is telling everyone that he is attacking these places because he feels like it. And I won't lie, I personally am okay when the villain is just bad. Sometimes the villain is just bad. And um, I feel like for introductory villains that are kind of mostly just there to get the team together, and so we can kind of see that, I'm okay if they just exist to be bad. Um, they don't need to have this like deep, compelling, backgrounds i mean granted his he does considering like he he killed his siblings he just wanted to take over but i'm okay with him just being a villain um so the team gets back together and jenny sparks is going over the mission she is like she tells midnighter she wants him to sneak in onto gamora island while the rest of them are going to go to los angeles because they figured out that that is where the next and final attack is going to be because uh the villain has been drawing the circle with these three dots on everything and they kind of used that and figured out how to triangulate where the next attack was going to be so she was like you know i'm gonna have midnighter get in behind on gamora island we can drop you off we can use our teleporter to get inside this force field while the rest of us will go to los angeles to protect it before we can kind of get there before the attack actually happens she gets annoyed because she hates calling midnighter midnighter she's like what is your real name and um He's like, no, you, you would call me Midnighter. And, say that is my real name. <laughs> and then, and then he, she was like, you and Apollo don't have men, real names at all. She's like, I mean, Midnighter's like, no. And she says, oh, well, which one of you is Bert? Which one of you is Ernie? Which 
<laughs> I don't know if that kind of joke would have gotten away with like today, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I thought it was funny. They also like cursed in this, which I thought was like, okay. I think one of like... the most interesting things when I go back and read old comics is like how frequently they actually like cursed in the comics. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. And it was like, and it was like, this would be like some bad words. Yeah. The engineer in here is asking, like, oh, could I um, bum a cigarette off of you, Jenny? And she was like, this is my last one. And the girl was like, well, I only want one. <laughs> and Jenny was like, bitch. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I thought it was funny, but I, it was wild to see that in a comic book now. <laughs> and uh, so then we get this really cool, like, stealth uh, shots of Midnighter going back behind the scenes, breaking into Gamora Island. He attacks someone who sees them and... He was supposed to go in undetected, <laughs> but the person still sees him. And when he punches him or kicks him, the guy doesn't uh, pass out. And obviously something's going to end up going bad for Midnighter. Uh, then back in Los Angeles, all of the team gets there. They're like, okay, cool. Let's like spread out. We'll get ready for the attack. And of course, it's already too late. The attack is already happening. And then that's the end of the issue. Um, I thought this was a great issue again. Um, still building the team. It's... Uh, probably a little bit slower, I guess, then maybe, or maybe I'm just not used to that because that's just what it was back then because this is going to be going, I think, for 29 issues or so. Um, stuff currently, I think they would have definitely been fighting in Los Angeles in this issue um, and not having to wait to the next one to kind of see that. So it's interesting to see. The stories have changed a little bit. Like, I feel like back then, the pa- yeah, the pacing's changed because I feel like back then, you kind of knew your book was going to last for a little bit longer than mm. six issues. So <laughs> yeah. You could take a little. I mean, like, what was that one tweet about Starman having a 70 issue run or something like that? And now we're begging on Twitter for a Green Arrow book. It's crazy. But. Yeah, time has changed. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> It was wild. Um, but anyway, great issue. I enjoyed it. Um, still really building up the team. I'm interested to see what happens to Midnighter while he's kind of out in the island by himself. And what I don't want to happen is I know Apollo's going to find out about that and then he's going to like leave the team high and dirty because he's going to save his man. And um, I love his man. He always going to come save him. <laughs> he do. He's always going to pop up. Yeah. They could be like, I'll never forget during Steve Orlando's uh, Midnighter book. They weren't even together at the moment, but Midnight was like trapped in some plane that was about to explode. And he was just like, I know you can hear me. I'm in this plane. Come <laughs> save me. And who really? popped up at the last second? <laughs> that's his man. Like, that's right. I love, it. I love it. I love it. That's probably actually what it is that's going to happen next issue. Um, and I can't wait for it. Um, <laughs> I love them. Um, and I would actually give this issue. Um, a 3.5 out of 5. Okay. That's really 3.75. Good. Love that. All right. Well, next up on your reread list is Annihilation Nova number one. And uh, go ahead. Tell us about Nova, I guess. Child, let me tell you something about Nova. I do not think he is smart. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I, see, I, I thought that was his whole thing. <laughs> but people, people love him. I don't get it. Like, <laughs> people genuinely, like, go up for Nova. But the more I keep reading stuff about him, the more I'm like, he is not very smart at all. I don't understand what the appeal is. So last issue in the conquest, this we start off with the big annihilation. All of the Nova Corps is gone. This issue wakes up. It gives you a recap of some of that and how they have pretty much just continued out throughout the universe and have been raging destruction and, and killing everyone. That was four days ago. Nova has been passed out on this island. I mean, on the barren waste, I guess, of uh, Xandar for four days. He, he's starting to kind of wake up. He is freaking out again about the how everyone is dead while the world mind is talking to him. The world mind, everyone is kind of like the, it's the owner of the Nova Force. It's like their big machine in the sky. If you were the Power Rangers, like it's like the Zordon. Um, and he sees some more annihilation bugs and they're like eating the old Nova Corps members, like the dead Nova Corps members that he knew. This caused him to freak out. So of course he just like runs off, attacks them. But of course he can't even defend himself against them. You just survived this explosion 
in this attack, too weak to fight them, he almost dies. The Nova, the Nova Force in his helmet has to take him out of that fight, activate his flight, take him away from that. And they are, this entire time they're telling him that like, everybody is dead, but the world mine, I'm still here. I need you to take me someplace so I can reconstitute myself and then I can kind of bring things back. It, I know the Nova Corps is dead and we can have time to mourn that later, but for now, at least take me somewhere and I can at least have the, cause he's like the, all of the culmination of everything of Xandar and the entire Nova Force, go and do that. Um, the entire time, Richard Ryder still needs everything like explained to him over and over again. Anytime, anytime the world mind would say something, Richard would be like, so what does that mean? Or like, explain it to me like I'm slow or like break this down for me. And um, finally he gets it. He's like, oh, you, <laughs> that, you know, it's funny to like hear that. Cause honestly, even when we say about Richard Ryder, that would be me. I'd be like, I'm not smart <laughs> that way. You need to explain <laughs> this differently because I don't get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, pay attention, <laughs> my, my gosh. <laughs> and Richard's like, oh, okay, I get it. You want me to absorb all of the Nova Force, which is what the world mind has created up. And he's like, you know, I only carry this a little small fraction of the Nova Force with me whenever I'm a Nova. And he was like, I don't know if I can contain all of it. He was like, no party can. He started listing off these things. At some point he calls the guy dad. He calls the world mind dad. He said it slipped up because he's just having flashbacks of his daddy issues, of his dad trying to explain stuff to him and make sure he was focusing. Um, he says, you know what, let's just do it. He absorbs it all. And of course he is actually too able to contain it all. This is where we get the new costume that most people know Nova to have, where instead of like the, these three big dots, there are these like energy orb things you kind of see on him. The costume he has currently is when he got the all of the world mind. We see that which I bet at the time was probably really cool for everybody to see when this was coming out. Um, so of course, once he gets all of the Nova Force energy in him, he's like, well, I wanna attack. He goes to off into space to try to attack the annihilation wave that's there and is completely overwhelmed instantly. And the Nova Force ends up making him leave and try to find some space for him. He's like, no, we need to like think about this first. And he starts to wake up looks up who is in front of him but Drax and Cammy, who we saw from Avengers Arena. Oh, Cammy. Yeah. It was this is this her first appearance? This well she appeared in that Drax series, if anyone remembers like when I said that this Annihilation started there was a Drax mini series. That was her first um, oh, okay. appearance. Okay. She was like the little Earth girl that was following him around. So yeah she's she's here now and I guess Drax might be starting to help He's like, you know, I've got a way for us to get off of this planet. Like, you need to work with me. I know you're a Nova. Fun issue. I will say that, like, I really liked the art. And I did like, I did think that the new costume is cooler than his other costume. So I'll give them that for sure. I just, I don't know. I don't see it for Richard Ryder. And I know every, everybody does. I really don't see it for him like that. Is and this I guess something... supposed, allegedly this is supposed to be the thing that makes you a Richard Ryder fan. Makes you a Richard Ryder fan, yeah. How many issues is this? Four? Allegedly five? four. Four. This is well, this his miniseries is four, but this event I think is another like twelve issues. Oh gosh. And he's the main player of it all. There's more there's Silver Surfer comes in. It's pretty much how everyone is affected, but I think he ends up becoming like the big hero of it all. Okay. Well, we'll keep see. Us post, keep us posted. Mm. Tell us how it goes. <laughs> we'll I'm, I'm, I'm excited for your journey with Richard Ryder. Um, what's the art like? Um, I was gonna say, and I don't know if anybody would really understand this, but it is classic 2007 Marvel, if that makes sense. I absolutely understand what you're saying. Do you know I, what I mean? I have so many books in my <laughs> when you say that. I got it's it. Bad. Okay. It's bad. Okay, like all right. That. It served its purpose. Yeah. All right, well, next up on our list, Fantastic, we're getting back to the present books now. Fantastic Four, number seven, from Ryan North. And I, I keep forgetting, who's doing the art? Is it Koala? Ibanez? Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Look at me. You got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
So this issue opens up with the team still on the run from Maria Hill, um, but they weren't that on the run for that long because it only lasted for a page <laughs> because Sue turns them invisible. They end up getting away. They end up going to um, the things on Petunia's place, which uh, if people know that's like something he always shouts out like, oh, my great Aunt Petunia whenever something happens. So they end up going to one of her um, old places. I guess she used to live there back in the day, but after, you know, they became the Fantastic Four and everything, she ended up moving out. But since they're on the run, they come to this place and move in there. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought this was going to be some corny, like, oh, the family is at Aunt Petunia's, and then they, Aunt Petunia talked about there being some kind of ghost that haunted them, and we see this ghost hand thing that kind of haunts everybody while they're sleep, sleeping. I thought it was going to be kind of that, and then more of them as, like, a family, because we get this moment of they need to fix the place up, and we get this moment of Reed and Human Torch to fixing the roof up, and it's cute to see this, like, brother and the brother-in-law kind of trying to work things out together and Reed being too scientific about stuff. And mind you, this entire time, they've been, like, struggling to remember words, like their memory is something is happening to it. So I thought it was going to be this, like, oh, look at the family being a family. Turns out it was Doom. <laughs> so... Uh, Ain't it always? <laughs> <laughs> and I won't lie, I was kind of gagged by it. I thought that there was going to be just like a haunted story or whatever they were going to come together, but it was Doom, and Doom was the one who used his sorcery and technology to create the ghost in the house, and um, who was affecting their speech and their memory as well because he needed to fix everything because he is the godfather of Valeria, and he's like you know. I can't believe you did anything to make something happen to Valeria. And because again, as everyone remembers, all the, everybody that was on Baxter, on that, that whole street, I think, is gone. They're gone for a year. Reed don't like that. I'm sorry, Doom doesn't like that. He comes in and basically fights everybody. And the funniest part I did think was when he was fighting everybody, he stopped Thing first. And uh, Reed was like the last one who tried to come in and fight. And he was like, well, you're like useless. <laughs> like, you don't even really do too much in the fight on this team. And took him out, which I thought was really kind of funny. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Really quick. Yeah. How does Doom become Valeria's godfather? Um, oh, man, I have to remember how that happened. It was something to do with her birth. I can't remember. <laughs> I've, been, I've read so many of these comics. But it's something to do with, like, it's she, funny it was, that you I, think that's something. I know she had complications with she had complications with um her first pregnancy where she had a miscarriage. Um I think that was her first that was though supposed to be Valeria, but she had a miscarriage. And then um then later she got pregnant and I think something happened there. I forget what happened. And I think Doom like helped it. Mm, okay. Like Doom built something. Or something yeah. to like help that helped it, yeah. So they were just like, just your guy, baby. I mean, I guess that's fair. He's like pseudo a part of the group, even yeah. though they fight. I can see that. Okay. When want... they when he lost out of Latveria, he came to the Fantastic Four to help him get it back, and they helped him. And then when he won, he kicked him out there. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Doom ends up using his like time abilities because again, Doom was like one of the first inventors in the Marvel Universe to use like this time platform to go back to try to stop Reed from ever sending everybody away. Long story short, he realizes that it always is going to happen. And um, he goes through this whole time loop. He's constantly being an annihilist, tries to beat the team. And of course, like, you know how time stories are. They end up showing you like, this is, if you change this one thing, this is the extreme that you are going to see next. And we see like a bunch of different moments of that with Doom, Doom and the Avengers and stuff. And uh, by the end of it, he realizes that he can't have himself go back in time to do that. So he ends up going back to the moment where he was going to leave in time and uses his uh, machine on his uh, wrist to kind of stop himself from using the time platform. And the machine malfunctions. The Fantastic Four ends up stopping him. And Sue was like, you know, that wasn't you who caused everything. That was actually me. I put this force field in your suit. And like that broke you up. 
Doom leaves and it's like, you know, fine. I'll leave it up to you guys. But if anything happens to Valeria, that's y'all ass. And then they all leave. And yeah, then everyone kind of stays. They decide, I think, that they're going to have the um, Petunia's house be their base for now since they kind of don't have a home. Okay. Oh, and then there was a stinger at the end of it where um, Maria Hill says that she let the Fantastic Four get away, that she knew she that, uh, that she knew that they were going to try to turn invisible and run away. She's talking to Nick Fury, and she says, you know, being the CIA person right now isn't enough. Like, there is some other things we need to be doing with superhumans. How would you like a different kind of job? And it looks like they're going to be starting S.H.I.E.L.D. again. But it's called Superhuman Intelligence Extra Legal Division. Lock them up. <laughs> <laughs> so, looks like S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming back around, which I'm okay with. I never thought it should have left in the first place. Like, it's one of those things. It's got to go up and down sometimes. Yeah, yeah. To... I'm but, not cool with it coming back. You know, I love Maria Hill and I love Nick Fury, so I support it. Yeah. Is and the Marvel Universe getting okay. back to basics? We got the I Avengers mean, coming back around, S.H.I.E.L.D. coming back around, the X-Men are being hated and feared again. Sentinels on the run. The House of Ideas, baby. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a great issue. Really fun, Doom focused. It was double sized, it was 44 pages. So mm-hmm. um, lots of fantastic art in there. Really cool stuff again with Doom. Okay, Great okay, issue. okay. Four out of five. Shout out to the Fantastic Four. I know some people who said they read it. So. Okay, we're here. That's that. And Good please, y'all, just. Let's just wait for the people to tell us what the fan, what, who was going to be them. Let's stop the fan cast. <laughs> Please. The fan cast are never going to stop. Um, I saw some, <laughs> a report, though, that was saying that Emma Stone was, like, looked at for Sue, but she yeah, had to drop out. Off to the side. Thank God for that. And I was, no, I thought she would have been a great Sue. She would not. Whatever. Anyways, moving on. We had a brand new number one this week. Uh, we actually had a lot of new number ones this week, but this one specifically we want to talk about um, was Avengers number one from Jed McKay and CF Villa. This is a big new era for the Avengers, of course. I have talked about Jason Aaron's run while it was going on. I was a big fan of it. This one is once again, like you just said, kind of getting back to basis with the team. Um, there are two simultaneous stories going on. On one half of it, we see Carol, who has now been named the Avengers chairperson. She's kind of like bringing the team back together. She's talking to Tony. They're talking about how they're good friends. He's her sponsor. Da da da. She needs him. They want the Avengers to stop being seen as cops. They want to be firefighters, you know, saving people, doing what they need to do. And for the rest of the issue, we kind of see her going around like recruiting different people for the team, which we'll get a little bit more into. Um, the second half of the story is the team together fighting. T- Terminus. He is this giant big cosmic machine, alien monster thing. Very powerful, very strong, very big throwback. Again, getting back to basics, hitting the classics. And while this is going on, um, they're also surrounded by Project Pegasus people, and they are creating an artificial black hole reactor. So that's it. (laughs) Towards the end of the issue. <laughs> so, like getting into the specifics of everything, I want to say I do think like Carol's recruitment of each member was like very well done. I think like it hit to the heartstrings. I didn't really care for Sam's. I won't lie to you, mostly because it was like I get the whole aspect of we want to have the human guy on the team who's grounding us and like doing what we need to do and like keeping us safe. But like. The way she was just talking about it was kind of like, you know, Steve is this soldier out of time. He's done this and that. He's this great war hero. Da 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 da. Sam, you're just some guy. You're a social. Worker. <laughs> it's like that's not now. See, that's how. That's that's exactly, that's exactly what she gave. That's exactly <laughs> what she gave. And I expect it from Carol because she's ignorant. So I only let it slide because of that. But I didn't like the way that was handled. There was a much better way that she could have said that, and it could have been handled. Like, let's not downplay who Sam is. Like, he was not just leading some of the greatest Avengers time and kick your ass during this. But that's, no, 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 that's not what she said. She was like, you, Sam, social worker. Like, okay. Like, you for the people. But anyway. She said we don't need some old man. We need people for the people. I understand the intent behind what she said, but she could have said it better. That's all I'm going to say about that. 
But the stuff with Wanda, I thought, you know, how she was like, once an Avenger, always an Avenger, you are my people. Um, the stuff dealing with Vision. I really do like McKay's, McKay's Vision as well. I thought that was really good. Thor, I'm liking this team. Um, when we get back to the team and the actual battle, I thought that was really well done, kind of seeing them all, like how they communicate, you know, Captain Marvel to Iron Man, Iron Man to whoever, going back and forth and still getting a bit of those inter interpersonal relationships in between. I love that Sam and T'Challa still kind of beefing from what was going on in Sam's book. You caught on Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of saving his life. <laughs> that. Us, doing that that's going on um it was just really good so and towards the end of this big fight with terminus um and project pedicist the black hole reactor is going to explode um wanda is doing like her bit to try and hold it in place but they need to get it clear so carol of course is like okay i'll take it it's getting really bad it's getting dangerous sam flies up he's like okay i'm gonna try and intercept it explodes and carol wakes up it looks like in another universe or another time of some sort and who was there but Mr. Kang himself, not blue, but he's hurt. And he's like, Carol, I've been waiting for you. It's about time you got here. And that's where the issue ends. But why would he be blue? That mask. Just wear the mask so you can be blue. <laughs> <laughs> People love that mask, but but they think he blue. <laughs> Just wear the mask so you can be blue. I don't know what else to tell you. You should be blue. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Um, I thought the place where she walked up looked kind of cool. Um, he had a good for so I'll appreciate that. He did. He don't take them off. Yeah. <laughs> no, see, okay. I always give it Mary J. Blige. <laughs> King J. Blige. And <laughs> I think yeah. that um, the issue was great as far as like a first mm -hmm. issue. Um, I do appreciate them getting back to basics. When they do stuff like this and where they, and also comment on where every character is at that moment it makes it feel like the a continuation of the avengers franchise rather than we starting all over and doing this again and this probably won't matter when the next one comes i like when the when someone decides to pick up the baton instead of stepping right over it um, yeah. i mean i don't remember the last time they've had a avengers run that opens with a recruiting of the team normally they just yeah. are and i love a good together recruit. Red drive. I think those are some yeah. of my favorite issues. I think back to like those JLA and JSA issues where you just have the Trinity yeah. kind of like going over everybody. I think stuff like that is really dope and it's fun. I love this classic team of Avengers. I would like maybe like one or two more additions, specifically women. I think like a She Hulk would be great here. I think a Firebird would be amazing on this team and really like continue that classic feel of bringing back some of the stuff. She's connected to these people. It's time. Um, but what she got to do pan out pamphlets fire, right? about yeah. God, the goddess of fire, handing yeah. out pamphlets to people <laughs> so, talking she, about Jesus. She's the goddess, and her and Thor when they get together. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so good. Let me write McKay right now. Let me actually write. I don't Marvel. know. What's the <laughs> email? Because I'll send them something. Anyways, but that's how I feel. Um. You know, but other than that, I think the team feels very classic. I think it's very good. Like you said, I think it was a really good introductory issue to bring them into it. It feels big. I'm going to stick around. CF Bella's art is really great. Like, I thought this was a fine issue. Again, I had, like, my own issues with some of the recruitments. But honestly, I'd give this, like, a solid four out of five. Okay. Yeah, same here. Four out of five. We'll continue with the Avengers then. Welcome back. Yeah. Even though yeah, they never, welcome back. Oh, man, I was a fan of Avenger Aaron stuff, but whatever. And our final big book of the week was our uh, number one for Cyborg. Again, continue DC's initiative with their new books, and this comes from Morgan Hampton and Tom Rainey. And Morgan Hampton actually won one of the like writing competitions that DC had. I think it was actually from Milestone, and then like he's kind of like come over into that side with that. So this was really cool for him to see. He did do a little bit of the story in one of the DC anthologies that came out recently. That was good. And honestly, this issue continued to be good. We start out with Cyborg. He's back in Detroit. He's fighting Gizmo and Mammoth, who are like attacking some kids in Detroit. Um, and he takes them down. Everybody's like, "Oh, Cyborg's back. He's this and that. Da 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 da. He's that dude." However. There is an Estelle Green who runs the Do Better Detroit like blog. She's basically Charlemagne, and this is her breakfast club. <laughs> and so she's like, you know, talking about like 
they're showing the video of Cyborg in the center. She's like, I know that's not who I think it is. Like, the Booyah Boy is back, and he's like, you know, he pops in and out only when he's trying to do something nice for the cameras. He's going to go back to the Titans. He's going to go back to the league. She's, like, really going in on him. And so it's like you see her come. Kind of gagged him a little Anyway. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was interesting because while Cyborg was like fighting Mammoth and all of this stuff, he keeps getting phone calls and texts from Sarah Charles. And they're all very no Sarah Charles is like the one who's kind of been considered his like longtime love interest. Yeah. And so she's also been reconned into a black woman. So if you go back to the Wolfman Perez. Oh, it's not a white lady no more. Yeah, you'll see that she's a white woman. She has been reconned into a white woman. Okay. Well that I can get behind. Cause like, you know, for a while I was always wondering. Why he always chasing this white lady around? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I wish she, she, she was, <laughs> Sarah was like a very good woman. She was like helping disabled kids and other things like that. She had really good intentions. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter anymore because she's black now and she works for Star Labs. And so she had been calling Victor. Um, so when he he kept like denying her calls and texts when he was in the middle of a fight, but finally he picked up and he's like, it's something surprising. So then we cut to Estelle and her stuff. And we also learn about she does something called the dumbass of the day. And exactly. And this is a guy named Marcus Wilcox. Very sharp man, I'm telling you, that's exactly who she is. And uh, this Wilcox guy is somebody who's from Detroit. He's been working in these different tech programs and companies. He's basically bringing like a lot of gentrification to Detroit. And so they're like talking about him. We cut back to Cyborg. We discover that the news he got from Sarah Charles was that his dad, Silas Stone, the one who was responsible for him becoming Cyborg, has died. He oh, had. No a heart attack and Sarah's like really upset about it. She's like, you know, he was in there for 10 minutes before he like had the heart attack before he died. I could have saved him. Da, da, da. Cyborg is like, I know he much how much he meant to you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he really does care damn. <laughs> yeah, it was like, you know, you don't have to be like that. He is your dad. And Cyborg is like, I mean, we ain't really that tight. We ain't have the best relationship. <laughs> it is what it is. So um we find out that Cyborg actually goes to therapy and he's talking to his therapist. She's like, you know, we've had really big breakthroughs about your mom and stuff that you've done. We haven't spoken about your dad. So then we get this moment of Cyborg talking about his dad's funeral. And I was kind of confused during these pages, honestly, because the scene starts out on the page with him like at the funeral giving a eulogy like oh my dad meant a lot of things to a lot of people and then the rest of it's this giant splash page just talks about how like Silas didn't really do anything for him. And I wasn't sure if this was a part of the eulogy that he was telling at the funeral or if this was just something he was saying to the therapist. <laughs> Sometimes um, you got to air it out. <laughs> because if it was at the funeral, it was very messy. However, I will say that Morgan does something which is really appreciated. A lot of people have always gone back and forth on whether or not they feel as those cyborgs, cyborgs should be a part of the Justice League or the Titans. Morgan here has married him. We say that like Cyborg got his stuff as a teenager, you know, when the accident happened, that's when he joined the Justice League. However, he realized like, oh, he was too young to be on the Justice League. It wasn't the place he should be. So then he went and joined the Titans and that's how his like story fits in with it. So it's kind of melded of those two. And it still talks about like how Silas built Titans Tower and he had all of those experiences with him and he did all of that. It was just like, he was on the league first, actually can't be here. And then went back to the Titans. Um, so we still get a little bit of that. Right. Um, Acknowledging the 52 and move on. Exactly. And so that was appreciated. That happens. He goes home to the house. He's like, you know, I haven't been here since mom died, all of this kind of stuff. Or like everything's dusty. He sees his dad hasn't been here. There's this machine that's coming down the street towards the house. And they talk about this a little bit with Marcus Wilcox. He is working with these people to like build machines that are supposed to help people, bringing them food and like caring for them and stuff like that. Very iRobot, if you've ever seen that movie. And one pops up into the stone house. Cyborg immediately I like attacks him, but then it says his name. It's like Victor. He looks and he realizes this is his dad. So it seems like whatever has happened with his father, his consciousness, or he might be alive inside of this android body. He's got on his name tag and everything, and that's where the issue ends. So that's really interesting to me. Okay. I think that Cyborg and his dad's tenuous relationship has always been 
at the forefront of his stories. We all got daddy issues. I understand. Um, I think this is kind of presented in a new way, a dealing with the stoicism of his dad dying and then like having him come back and be a robot in his own right. And we're going to see how that goes. Tom Rainey is on art. I'm not going to lie to you. He's not my favorite artist. Um, I think the faces are a little wonky sometimes. I think the proportions can be a little bit off. It's tolerable here. I think a lot of the words and dialogue really help you overlook some of the like places where you find it a little bit more glaring than others. And I think a lot of times there's more standing still or like there's just focusing on like not a lot of movement so he can really fix the faces up a little bit better and it works. Um, I recommend this. I would give it a solid 3.5 out of 5. Really good work. Um, Flirt, I'm a cyborg fan. I have been for a very long time. Everybody knows I love the Titans. I think his stories have always been really good. I've always loved his place in the Titans, how he's kind of grown from like this guy who was on the team to one of its great leaders, even his time in the league. I appreciate a lot of that and the stuff they did in the books he had there. Um, I'm glad to see this kind of continuing that story. He's wearing his little athletic outfit with his sweatpants. That was cute. Him having his Charlemagne is nice. Him being back in Detroit, I think they're kind of like focusing in on like where he lives. Again, that's something that he needs to do. Gizmo and Mammoth popping up as like just two random villains he can fight works as well. And then they're building more up with this Marcus guy. So I'm into it. Highly recommend it. Okay, yes. Come on, Cyborg. I'm glad he's getting his due. He, you know, they keep <clears throat> with him. And I think a lot of writers in the past, I always recommend the David Walker run to people. I think that did a really good job of like marrying Cyborg to the league. Honestly, I think that was probably like a really good story for that. I know a lot of people kind of don't like it because in it, Cyborg gets the ability to transform his body so he looks completely human. And they feel like that kind of undermines the point of his character. I personally didn't mind it, but I also understand because I do like a nice mix of like Cyborg and organic in his design. But the ones after that, I think too many tried to focus on the man and machine aspect. Is he real? Is he a machine? Blah, 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 blah. And I think that kind of just got super old. So this, not even really touching on it and saying, hey, He's just cyborg, but who's this daddy? And I think that's a nice little twist for it. So this might be the one. Support. Okay. We'll get there. Um, but those are our books of the week. Not huge haul. Tell us what you guys read, what you liked. We'll take a break and then we'll come back. Let's do it. Did you see Lil' Kim's new um, magazine cover? I did. I thought she didn't look that bad. She looks good. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the uh, blonde wig on, up to <laughs> Queenie. <laughs> I was just telling my mom about how um, I snuck and listened to her CD when I was younger. You know, I'll never forget when I was younger and like my grandmother had listened to one of my CDs. And of course, it was like a Tupac or DMX CD one day. The most vocal one I have. And so she goes like, oh, this is horrible music. And so she Real like, rider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Did you get him out of the trash? Huh? I did. <laughs> I we all knew. Like, I was like, I was like, you, I was like, you listen to one album. Like, you throwing away my Britney Spears music. Like, I had a B2K album in there. I was like, well, this ain't that bad. Calm down. And she was just looking at me. She was like, you need some gloves? <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, welcome back to the watch section of the show. And this week we watched episodes two and three of Justice League. And <clears throat> they were written by Rich Vogel and directed by Dan Reba and Butch Luk- Lukic. I'm not, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, and I will have to say, again, kind of like what I said about the first episode but like these two episodes together it truly is like the best way in my opinion to like present a team and what they should have followed for live action like you have an antagonist or an outside antagonist that all of the heroes can use their abilities against you know in a way that each character can be shown to be powerful and be shown in the best light that you can and show the team 
coming together and being heroes. And that's what we got from throughout this one. We had the heroes uh, rescue uh, Martian Manhunter at the end of the last episode. And now with this one, they're trying to come together. And uh, the like alien creatures, I think they call themselves, I think it was like the Imperium. The Imperium, I think is what they call them. But what the big main one was was called the Imperium. I think so. They all were called that. <laughs> um, but anyway, they start attacking. The Justice League starts to come together. I will have to say it was a little bit of a stretch for Martian Manhunters to be like, "Oh, well, I sent out a call for them to come and help," because Green Lantern says he was like far away in space. <laughs> so that all makes a lot of sense. But whatever, mm-hmm. we move because um, everyone comes together, gets to draw off their powers. Wonder Woman. Um, John don't really see it for her, and I'm on his side. <laughs> so uh, you know I am. <laughs> um, John is like, you know, who was the rookie in the tiara, and she tries to show it off like her skill. Um, later on, they kind of like butt heads because he's like, you know, this is what we need to be doing, and she's like, well, I'm from Themyscira, I can do what I need to. He's like, girl, relax, <laughs> we're a team. You know what's um, also interesting, like rewatching this series now, seeing how they get or like how they start out knowing how far they come in the actual show yes and like how close like they're friends and like she was on his side especially when she was dating shaira and shaira turned out to be a little traitor but we're gonna get off of that either we're gonna show i'm sure i'm <laughs> sure we'll get there <laughs> i got thoughts about that bird lady so i'm sure we'll get there um but yeah i thought that the uh episodes are really great we see the characters kind of fight back against the uh, aliens they split up into teams of Two John is with Flash, um, and Flash is being annoying, <laughs> which I thought they had a cute little rapport there. Um, at the time, I don't think I knew that this was Wally when I was first getting into this. I mean, this came out in two thousand one, so I was. 10. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly don't think I remembered any type of way. Like, if I thought because I also was never a big Flash person, so for me it was like very Wally. I feel like I. I think I might have leaned more Wally just because at the time I knew more of him being a Titans fan and Barry was dead for a lot of time anyway so it was like okay obviously this is who that is but it was like it's Flash I don't care <laughs> even as a kid even as like when I took I've never seen it for Flash like ever <laughs> I do not speedsters in general is just one of those powers I don't like the speedsters who I do like are very few and far between uh Liberty Bell Jesse Quick is like one of the few ones, and she loses her speed most of the time. So, yeah, that's just because it's a little overpowered. But whatever, that's not where we're here to talk about the Flash. He's just a part of the team. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the team all separates. They're trying to stop the invasion. Um, <clears throat> everyone kind of separates. Batman ends up getting taken over because they kind of break into the main place of where the aliens are um but of course batman don't have power so he couldn't get out in time before uh getting captured they end up coming back together rescuing everybody there's a big like you know hoorah moment <laughs> with all the superheroes when they kind of break free and rescue everybody which i thought was really fantastic to see i don't know i'm always gonna go up for superheroes saving people um i'm always gonna love that it's hard to have say yeah people. so so, um, how did you feel about this lineup of of this being the Justice League? Did you want Aquaman there? Did you want um, Vixen to be the main? Uh, well, obviously, uh, you know, obviously, I was a big Aquaman fan, like a lot of time growing up. But I think this, when this came out, two thousand one, you said? Yes, yes. I was so young. I wasn't like super heavy into DC like that at the time. I was mm-hmm. really still like more Marvel got the DC books that I did we were like Aquaman stuff, a couple of things few and far between and like Titans. That was really it. So everybody else I kind of knew of, but I hadn't gotten super far deep into a lot of other things. And when I saw this, it was really my introduction to a couple of them. Well I get the I had the Hawks too. You know I love using Hawkman. But mm-hmm. so it didn't really affect me any type of way. I know the league had existed. I know the league had been there all the time. But it was like I also know that the league was so big and that there were so many members of it. I didn't have a definitive. This is my league. This is what I see them as. Yeah, I think that's how it was for me as well. I wasn't really like that deep into DC. I didn't even start continuously reading DC until much later. I had some stuff before then, like random issues that I would read. Um, I was also a Borders kid, 
would go to Borders and <laughs> read a bunch of Borders. Oh there. my gosh. Classic. I used to love going to Borders and they had the spinner racks there. The in spinner the racks. Sections. Ah, man. What a Classic. Time. I used to go and read the books there and stuff. So I knew uh, some of them, but I didn't have my own, like Justice League that I had. I was still very, almost strictly Marvel <laughs> at that point. I do remember at the uh, time, though, like, I loved Hot Girl. I knew that for a fact. The Mace had me even all the way back then. Wonder Woman, obviously, she was kicking back. Wonder Woman. Like, look at that. Yeah. Once I started getting more, I, I was Hot Girl. like, mm. Hot girl was the doll. I'm sorry. She I had. She was useless. He was as a kid. Uh, I was like, what? She you came can't beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> she put she that baby down, girl. Me that mace, <laughs> too much like, to right. She didn't do much without the mace. I will agree with that. But when she worked it, she worked it. <laughs> um, I did always. I was happy to see John. I was already a John fan at that point. So. John um, that is definitely like cemented into my childhood nostalgia. And again, part of the reason why John is old. Hopefully we can break free of that. Um, they probably have to fix that in live action or something. But we're working on it. Okay. Although I saw some of some preview of him recently and it had him being bald and I blame it for all this show. Yeah. So <laughs> also like, whoa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they can't draw black hair, so they make they a just ball. Cut it off. Yeah. I don't like that. We'll fix it. Um, but yeah, I think this was, again, I think this should have been the way that the live action Justice League should have been created. These characters are so iconic that even if they weren't to have a solo origin movie before, you could have done something where they truly just teamed up to fight a Starro or to fight these random aliens that came and they just came and that's what they formed the Justice League as. You know, at the end of this, they are building the Watchtower, of course, funded by Batman. And they're like, you know, we did great together. What if we stayed together as a team? And Flash is like, you know how corny that sounds. And Superman is like, you know, what if we're just like the Justice League? And they kind of go from there. I think that's easy enough for you to do with these very iconic characters. Then from there, you can do solos, which I think is what they do in this show. I think for the next, for this season, each couple episodes that kind of, you know, spotlights for Something each around individual. Yeah. Maybe get some of their villains, which, you know, even like I was saying earlier, I might not care about the Flash, but that Rose Gallery is iconic. And he's They're got some really cool ones. And so it's like yes. you get to see those people come in. And like even just how the league, Episode. we'll get there when we get there. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to see how they uh, interact with Aquaman. I don't need a little nasty thing um, in this. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, this was definitely he definitely got a lot of that like '90s pad era Aquaman synergy. I'm so glad we moved past that. The hook hand and all that. I never want to see it again. Do you like him on the Justice League, or should he always kind of be the king that they come to sometimes? I like him on the league. He gets along with them sometimes. Like, I like it. I, honestly, I like his relationships with Diana and Bruce a lot. I like his animosity with Clark. They're, they kind of don't like each other, and I think that's fantastic. And he's I like also, it too, a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also got a really good relationship with uh, Martian Manhunter. Him and John, I can't think of too much that they do, but they be around. I don't know. They be around each other. I don't think they really interact too much like that. No. That'd be, that'd be a fun team up. Maybe. You know. think he likes John or Hal? John. He definitely don't like Hal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I like these episodes a bunch. Uh, the animation was great. I thought that the what they were able to show on HBO Max was in HD, and they definitely used um, HD versions of this because the animations were a lot more crisp, and the lines were a lot uh, crisp, crisper than previously, and I like that a lot. Um, yeah. A little nostalgic, I guess. It's, but it's, it's, a great, it's always it's a great a series. cartoon to watch. And it's on Netflix now for people yes. as well. You want to watch it there. They've got that and Justice League on there. Yes. Yeah, so Which I also rewatched watch watch. the first episode, even though I know we did it a long time ago. But I rewatched the first episode of that again. And it kind of just takes me back to this Avengers issue. Because in that, Green Arrow was complaining like, oh, I can't be on this team because I'm a human. Da, 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 da. And Batman was like, girl, get over it. Like, this is why you're here to do that. And how he said it was so much better than how Carol said it. You're going to find a way to hit on Carol. 
I'm just stating the fact. This is what's written away. in the books. This is what's written in the books. I'm just reading what's in the books. Find a way. My gosh. Tell, you call the man a man of the people, and now they're mad. <laughs> <laughs> you she say, said, oh, why person. we need this out-of-time war here, bro? Oh, you're just some guy. You are the guy. We are picking you over the other one, and they still mad. Can't win for loser. What a shame. Hopefully she kick him off soon. Anyway, all right. Well, then that brings us to uh-huh. the end no of the show. Me. That brings us to the end of the show. Please make sure you guys rate and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Another Relaunch. You can email us at anotherrelaunch at gmail.com. You can watch us on YouTube at Another Relaunch TV. You can find me on most social media platforms at Uncanny LZ. Keenan, where can they find you? As always, you guys know you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Keenan Lance. There's an underscore at the end. All right, so let's get up out of here and we'll catch you next week. Peace. Peace out.